Hey, so zoneless, what is it? How do we go zoneless? And how does zoneless improve our Angular applications? Let's take that first question first. In the context of Angular, zones refers to the zone.js library. This library intercepts asynchronous API calls through a process called monkey patching. Monkey patching basically modifies or extends the default behavior of a function at runtime without changing the source code. That way, a call to a function, such as set interval or HTTP get, can be intercepted and additional functionality executed, such as triggering change detection. Change detection is how Angular checks whether the component state or data has changed and if any DOM elements in the UI need to be updated. Angular has used zone.js to aid with change detection. Starting with Angular version 18, there is a new, experimental, zoneless scheduler that kicks off change detection, so we won't need zone.js anymore. Let's start with a demo application that uses zones, then go zoneless. I'm in StackBlitz. This demo application uses four different techniques for updating state, and in all four cases, we expect Angular to react to the change and re-render the appropriate portion of the view. First, we have a simple property count. When clicking the button, we increment the count property. Since we've changed the state, we expect that new value to display in the view, and of course it does. Next, we have a property tick. Every time this interval goes off, we increment the tick property. We expect that new value to display on the page. Scrolling up, I'll remove the comment markers. And the tick value is re-displayed every time it changes. I'll comment it out again for now. Scrolling down, how about data returned from an HTTP request? Here we declare an array to contain the names of our team members. We subscribe to the returned observable, which issues the HTTP request. When the data is returned, we set that data into the array. We expect those array elements to then appear on the page. Scrolling up, I'll remove the comment markers for the for block in the template. And, as expected, it displays our list of team members. Let's comment that back out. Scrolling back down. Lastly, instead of manually subscribing and unsubscribing, let's access the return data directly in the template using an async pipe. Here we have a variable that directly references the observable returned from the HTTP GET request. Scrolling up. In the template, we use the async pipe. I'll remove the comment marks. And that works as well. We see the team members' names here. I'll add back the comment marks for now. In prior versions of Angular, all of these scenarios worked and updated the UI because of zone.js. With Angular version 18, we can remove zones from the application. The process of removing zone.js is slightly different if you're using StackBlitz versus a local editor such as VS Code. Let's look at both. In either case, we start by modifying how we bootstrap the application. In StackBlitz, scrolling down, we add another provider. Provide experimental zoneless change detection. This option is available starting in Angular version 18. As its name implies, it's currently experimental. That means that it's there to try out, but isn't ready for production applications yet. Then, scrolling up, we delete the import for zone.js here. We are now zoneless. The steps for going zoneless are different if using an editor such as VS Code. I'll swap over to a new version 18 project I recently created with the CLI and opened with VS Code. I'll run it to ensure it works. Rearrange the windows, and we see the default template. Before we move on, here's a tip. If you want to see if your application uses zone.js, open the browser console and type zone. Be sure it's a capital Z. 
If it displays the zone class, the application has zone.js loaded. To go zoneless, navigate to the app.config.ts file. I'll reformat a bit so we can better see this code. Replace the default zone change detection provider with provide experimental zoneless change detection. Notice the error message we see in the console. It tells us that we are now using zoneless change detection, but we are still loading zone.js. It then identifies our next step. We need to remove zone.js from the polyfill section of the angular.json file. Navigate to the angular.json file and search for zone.js. We see it here in the polyfills array for our build configuration. I'll delete it. Searching down, it's also here in the test configuration. I'll remove both zone.js entries from the polyfills array. That's it. Now we are zoneless, but the message here says that we still have zone.js loaded. That's because I'm already running the application, so it doesn't reread the angular.json file we just changed. We need to open the terminal, stop the compiler, and restart. Now we don't see a warning in the console, and if we type zone, we see that zone.js isn't loaded. Great! That's how we make our Angular project zoneless. Since our demo code is in our StackBlitz project, let's go back to that. Now that our demo application is zoneless, let's walk through our same four scenarios. Here again is our simple count property. We click the button and the new value is displayed. How does that work? Scrolling up, the click handler schedules change detection. This is true for all Angular event handlers that are bound in the template, so Angular reacts to data changed within an event handler and redisplays that data. It just works. Cool! How about our tick? I'll uncomment our binding. Nope, the value doesn't redisplay. Angular doesn't know about the state change. But if we click the button, the click handler schedules change detection and redisplays our state, so both the count and the tick are updated on the page. How do we fix it so Angular knows about our tick state change? Well, one way is to use mark for check to manually tell Angular to schedule a change detection cycle. Scrolling down, we first inject change detector ref which is a class that provides change detection functionality. This class existed in prior versions of Angular, but in almost all cases wasn't needed because zone.js handled change detection for us. For async operations, we need to schedule a change detection cycle ourselves, so we call mark for check. In our case, we call mark for check after updating the state here. Now every time set interval updates the tick, it's updated in the view. Another option for handling change detection is to use signals. If you are new to signals, check out my signals video linked above and in the video notes. I'll remove the mark for check and the change detection ref, and the tick is no longer updated in the view. I'll change the tick to a signal and add the needed import. Then, instead of updating the property directly, we use the signal update function to increment the value. In the template, we add parentheses to read the value of the signal. Now our view displays on each tick, and we don't need mark for check. When the view reads the signal, Angular registers the signal as a dependency of the view. When the signal changes, the view is notified and it re-renders to display the modified value. Let's think about that for a moment. If, over time, everything is a signal, and Angular knows which views depend on which signals, would it make sense to even call it change detection anymore? Maybe in the future we'll call it change resolution, or change synchronization, or change reconciliation. <laughs> okay, moving on. What about our HTTP request? I'll comment out our tick and uncomment our for block to display the retrieve list of members. 
but nothing happens. Like the set interval, an HTTP request is an async operation. There is nothing that automatically schedules change detection when the data is retrieved, so the view is not re-rendered and the data doesn't display. Bummer. We could call Mark for check in this case, but let's see if there's a better way. How about the async pipe? I'll comment out our first four block and uncomment the async pipe version. There are our team members. This works because the async pipe schedules change detection whenever a new value is emitted into the observable. Scrolling down, when the data is retrieved and emitted into our members dollar observable, change detection is scheduled and the view re-renders. Another option is to use signals. Scrolling back up, I'll comment out the async pipe code and uncomment our original for block. And again, no data is displayed. Back in the component code, I'll change the members array to a signal by calling toSignal. Scrolling up, I'll import toSignal from at angular slash core slash rxjs dash interop. Scrolling back down, here in toSignal, we pass in the observable returned by our HTTP request. The toSignal automatically subscribes and unsubscribes to that observable. A signal must always have a value, so for the second argument, define an initial value of an empty array. The signal is set to that initial value until the HTTP GET emits the retrieved data. Now we can delete the subscription code and the unsubscribe. In the template, we modify the member's variable to read the signal by adding parentheses, and our data appears. By reading the signal, Angular registers the signal as a dependency of the view. When the signal changes, the view is notified and it re-renders to display the modified value, all without zones. Okay, so now we know how to go zoneless, what about the why? Why would we want to go zoneless? Zone.js makes some assumptions about when component state may have changed, so it may run change detection and re-render views more than it needs to. Going zoneless, state changes are more explicit, minimizing unnecessary change detection cycles and re-rendering. The bundle no longer needs to include zone.js. The zone.js code no longer needs to be loaded. It's also important to note that not all APIs work effectively with zone.js, such as native async await. Removing zone.js ensures better long-term compatibility with existing and future libraries. And if you ever saw that expression changed after it was checked error, that error should go away when you go zoneless. Here are several ways to ensure your views are updated for state changes when using zoneless. Use a bound event handler, like updating our counter on a button click. Manually manage change detection with mark for changes. Use an async pipe. Or embrace signals. The recommended approach is to start moving all displayed state to signals. But these other techniques allow you to start moving to zoneless now, even if your application hasn't yet migrated to signals. If you go zoneless, let me know how it went and what you think of it in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.